Hello, this is Daniel Thomas Andrew Daly. This video is, presentation is ANN Issues 4. I'm just going to have a, a smoke. I'm going to try and speak um, a little bit more politely and eloquently in this video. Um, some of these new videos I'm going to try and put in a little bit of a better performance in the way I speak to you guys. Um, comedy Dolls will still have a bit of swears in it, because that's appropriate for Comedy Dolls. But I'll try and keep these things a little bit more formal in my sermonizing. There's a little bit of swears in some previous sermons, but I'm, I'm going to try and keep that well under control. Only a little bit of that should come in. Sermon Sermonizers really shouldn't really shouldn't swear much. It should be quite minimal. Um, a pastor shouldn't really be known for swearing very much. It should be quite minimal. Now, I have a, a hat of a pastor, but I also have a hat of a comedian. And forgive me, but in the, no the comedy dolls, I frickin' swear a bit. That's what goes on in comedy dolls. That's, that's um, comedy in the vein of Eddie Murphy and Billy Connolly and Danny Boy and people like that, you know. It's traditional, the the, the foul-mouthed comedian. That that's it's following that tradition, but uh, they're not reckless or irresponsible to comedy dolls. They have good attitudes. They swear a bit and they're cheeky. Zelda can be a bit cheeky. This is an A and M issue. Zelda can be a bit cheeky and uh, transsexual. He's not not he's not really a transsexual. Uh, he doesn't practice any of those behaviors in reality. Just letting you know that Zelda, Zelda Link is generally, in his conclusion of things, pretty quickly, is, uh, I have a bit of fun. I have a bit of fun. He's going to have a bit of fun and a bit of mockery. But generally, he's pretty much heterosexual, like Pooh and Pookie are generally heterosexual, if you must know. The comedy dolls are basically straight, and they're, they're no hide in faith, although a few of them have Catholic tendencies, and there might be a Pentecostal in there, I'm not sure. So, um, the Comedy Dolls has a, a bit of swearing in it. Maybe a few of the other videos have a little bit. And a, a few of the sermons get a bit cheeky. But take them on their own merit, I suppose. But mostly my sermons should have clean language and decent discussion and talking. So, for any potential Carite Noahides who join the AM in the future, Generally, we're supposed to preach um, decent speak, decent talk, DC talk, decent Christian talk, DN talk, decent Noahide talk. Now, um, religions, it's sensible for an iconoclastic leader of a religion or an iconic classic leader of a denomination or an assembly, even a, a congregation head, to pray over their flock. In the ANM we advocate, this is another issue, in, in the advanced number we advocate some people, generally for most people, to pursue a steady working career and a regular life. But um, in the teachings of the Rainbow Bible, if you find that you've got you're just going to go for the glory. We advise generally choose a sensible education and a normal career. But if you must go for it, then go with your whole heart. If you must make a name for yourself in the world, then go with everything you've got. Give it all that you've got the rest of your days. You don't commit to just a number of years. I'll try this out. That might work. Commit to the whole span and make the sacrifice because it'll pay off in the eternal anyway. If you make the sacrifice, it will pay off in eternity. The artist suffers for his art and often dies poor, and that might be a reality. But it will reap a fortune, a name for yourself in eternity. It's worth the suffering. It's a horrible thing to have to endure, but it's worth it. Now, I started saying, as, as I just said with this issue, iconoclasts and things like that, they pray over the congregation. If you've got a fan base for your artistic work or your music work or whatever endeavor of creative endeavor you're in, do the same. Pray over your fan base. It's not really so much a religion, your fan base, but
but it is a community of sorts. So using this example, Kelly Clarkson, if, if I were to offer a piece of advice, I would, and if she wanted to, to accept it, I'd say, pray over your fan base, Kelly. Pray over it. And in eternity, as we teach in A&M Doctrine, people, you acquire your rights on earth for eternity, and your offspring, your heavenly offspring, which go down on further levels of your years which they're born on in heaven, years which you live on in heaven, they can acquire the same product that you acquire. So, Kelly Clarkson is an example, or Madonna, or John Bon Jovi, or Rihanna, or Taylor Swift, or whoever, um, ACDC, whoever, if they have developed legal prayer for their fan base on earth, then they can use those prayers again in the next life, and their fan base, if they continue to pray each cycle of life, will grow eternally. And it will probably grow well if they have decent prayers to God the Father. So, for those in the A&M who want to seek the glory, you can work on things like Facebook and YouTube and other places, and you can promote with basic ads your, your thing, and get a little bit of subscribers and fans and connections and uh, friends and stuff like that and promote it to them a bit. Uh, even if you have to do it for free to start with, once you've built up a bit of a fan base of people who are working with your, with your work, who are looking at your things, pray over the fan base that you have to God and it will build eternally in the next life. Some of those people will be inheriting the, the eternal. So pray over your fan base. So that's, that's another A&M issue. Um, and generally the uh, third issue is um, just talking again on the second Genesis ideas. I listened to the advice of the comedy dolls in the end, as I said in that video, and uh, Daniel wised up. Um, now the Chronicles of Children and Destiny will just go on as the Chronicles of Children and Destiny. Now the former structures of the Noah High books of the Angels Saga I was divided up. They exist historically in their time periods, so they're relative to their time periods. And the spirit said to me that that the older websites, the older, uh, prof, uh, older, every time you update, there's, there's a new website for it, which has got a an extra slash and probably a date or something of the update or something in the heavenly. So there's there's an update. So those older structures of the Chronicles of the Children of Destiny exist. And the angel sagas exist, and I think I'm getting fan fiction up there. So that's 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 normal. But as of this part of 2017, March 2017, it's now pretty much the Chronicles of the Children of Destiny. And I think the Daniel wised up advice of the comedy dolls is probably the way it's really going to stay now. I don't really envisage it changing now. And finally, uh, world to come issues, still ambivalent. I, I'm still ambivalent. Two, two main thoughts which are considered. Yes, there's a resurrection coming up. No, there's not a resurrection coming up. Yes, it's a possibility because it's the word of God. No, it probably won't happen in reality because it's just not realistic. And I'm of two minds. I'm not able to discern which is right and wrong because God won't keep it clear. And he tells me that. He won't really give me a firm answer on that. So I don't know for sure. One thing I will make though as a general judgment is that if by the year 6,000 in the, the Jewish calendar, the Hebrew calendar, if by around, oh well, year 6,007 or 8, something like that, no messianic figure appears to be on the world stage, and no resurrection has occurred, even though I suppose theoretically that could be the birth date of the Jewish Messiah in tradition, which should be the Archangel Michael in our tradition, Perhaps he could be born then, but um, and maybe he'll have 400 years according to two Ezra's doctrines, or four Ezra, which is the pseudepigrapher. So maybe he'll gradually come into his fame. But um, around the year 6000 and onwards, if Messiah isn't starting to become a bit of a reality, by then we're starting to let go, most likely, of world to come doctrines and passing the. Well, that's just bullshit. Probably never completely true. But. Until then, we can't really let it go as a movement. 
that's still considered. So, oh, let me see. That's about 200 odd years away, and there's 400 years of Messianic era, I suppose. Maybe they might argue a millennium. So, for the next few centuries, yes, we're still going to tinker around with this doctrine in the a and m It's still going to be considered a possibility. Might happen soon. Never know, but it won't be let it go of. If I live to like 80 odd, then in my lifetime, though, it's always going to be an issue. It's, just, it's always going to be an issue. Um, and something like Jeremiah 33, which teaches the potentiality for a king in every generation, well, there you go. But officially, resurrections of dead ideology, if by the year in, what well, it was, 20, 2017 now, I suppose, well, what can you say? I mean, 600 and... 600 odd years from now year 2600 you know I mean if nothing's really happened the world's just going on then you, you probably let those issues drop I mean 200 years of into the year 6000 and then 400 years of messianic son of God ruling according to two Esdras and you know I mean if, if nothing's happening, then yeah, it's never really true. Or it was just a resurrection to heavenlies from the time of the Maccabean period, which is celebrated by the Feast of Hanukkah when Daniel 12, Daniel 11 is supposed to be fulfilled with the culmination of the 4 BC. So it's, it's still got a few centuries in it of bite in it, this idea. But gradually, if, if nothing really does happen, then we probably just believe that, well, it's just heaven when you die. That, that should be the doctrine which takes over in Noahidism. The Jews were just bullshitting a bit, is all we would probably say. And I guess for Judaism, they'll, they'll probably face the same reality if Messiah doesn't show. Well, that was probably just bullshit. So, um, that's uh, a and Issues 4, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, sorry about the swears, I know I said bullshit, but I, it was appropriate for the context. But, like I said, I'll try and keep the language a bit better in future sermonology.